since we are uh, together, Diana and I, we are going to present um, this clipping uh, that is labeled Integrated Single Set and Unsupervised Spatial Transcriptomic Analysis Defines Molecular Anatomy of the Human or Solateral Prefrontal Cortex. Um, this one, this paper, uh, it's a publication uh, uh, for the authors, Lois Hockey and collaborators. Um, so we are going to do our best to um, provide the, an overview of the main topics that call our, our attention. So uh, in order to start, um, uh, here are the four, uh, are four points that call my attention that I think are the best. One, the describe the article. Uh, the authors present a molecular neuro neuroanatomical map of the human prefrontal cortex with novel special domain and cell-cell interactions that are relevant for psychiatric diseases. And to do this uh, study, uh, the authors use visum spatial data integrated with single nucleus RNA seq data to identify cell types and cell-cell interactions across special domains, and also um, to, in, to make an integra interactive analysis was using the SQL encode and public data to map the enrichment of the cell types identified and use associated with neuropsychiatric disorders to the spatial domains, particularly focus on the schizophrenia. And the, they also uh, present an integrate, um, uh, the integrate data, the vision and the single place forensic data in a Chinese app that is available for the scientific community in order to explore uh, the outputs that the present the special domains and all the intellectual findings in the human prefrontal cortex, cortex with the special domains. So um, this is a, like a caption of the shiny app that you can explore, where you can explore the, um, the highlights and all the work that was done uh, in this in this in this paper. Um, I will start presenting the, the first image that was, um, that was used to illustrate the study design uh, to generate the single nucleus and the spatial resolver transcriptomic data across the human DLPFC. So um, these samples were taken from a particular area that is called the area 46. Uh, that this uh, particular uh, use set to capture the layers one to six, including the five matter. So uh, the study uh, contains a total of 10 samples that, is, that are coming for 10, for 10 donors that includes the anterior, the posterior, and the axis regions. So uh, from these very same samples, uh, was taken the vision data, but was also taken at the same time um, single nucleus RNA seq data that are coming from the very same samples in order to match the information in the in the both technologies. Uh, in the panel B, what we are looking at is um, the, um, the design that was performed to make the data driving spatial domains and identify the cell types. Uh, we was using um, a manual annotation that was previously presented in a paper where it was using a shorter uh, cohort, uh, cohort number of donors. And also was performed as for the convolution in order to look at the cell proportions and was uh, integrated a complementary analysis in order to decipher cell cell communications that are found in, in the special domains in the context of generic um, diseases that in this case is considered considering the schizophrenia. And to do to integrate all this information, it was making or it was driving a uh, special registration that includes the SQL encode data uh, in order to look in the context of the expression profiles that were made with the single nucleus RNA-C data. So um, in the panel C, uh, the actors are presenting or summarizing the PSNE um, uh, map in, in order to present the layer resolution of the cell types identified that I think these were uh, 29 clusters. And in the panel D, what we can see is uh, how the tissue blocks, uh, how was confirmed the tissue blocks orientation and the morphology, 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 morphology uh, that was used um, in order to look at the 
at the different uh, cell types containing in the in the samples. So as you can see here, this is a uh, image of the tissue globe, and this is presenting or uh, uh, how was confirmed the orientation using the HNE uh, staining uh, technology, and also in this one is presenting the um, single molecular fluorescence in situ hybridization in order to look at the at, at the main um, uh, targets that includes the neurons, white matter, and gray matter using different colors in order to look at this. And and the pan and the spot and the spot plots that we look at the bottom of these ones uh, are used to confirm the presence of different uh, regions of the brain that includes the presence of neurons. Like we can look at here, where was you see these gene markers, the SNAP25, to look at the MVP, uh, using the marker MVP to look at the white matter that we can look at the, here, at the two extremes, and using the PCP4 uh, gene marker to look at specific uh, regions of the gray matter. So um, after to make the confirmation of the presence of the, of the different layers, that were considered that from the layer uh, one to six, including the white matter. In the panel C, is presenting uh, in the schematic uh, of the spatial domain identification and registration using the bias space. Uh, here's presented uh, per, uh, in a specific um, bias space cluster, uh, K equal to seven, but was also performed to different resolutions that includes uh, K equal to 9, 16, and 28 in order to look uh, at the broader approach, finer and, and a more finer resolution. And also uh, was making this uh, enrichment statistics in order to, to correlate the bias space founding, in this case, presenting a special domain seven, but uh, in, uh, in in correlation with the manual uh, annotations, uh, including the white matter. So for this particular um, uh, plot, we can look at the, in this case, the, where we can look at the, at the back, at the black, black dots. This is the, the, the layer, the white matter is the layer that results with more confident uh, base score, and is presented here in the spatial registration by the one that better described for this particular case. Uh, the representation of the different layers. But in any case here, what we are looking at uh, in this special registration heat map uh, is that um, most of the, of the layers uh, relies in the expected layer, for example, layer one to layer to the special domain layer one is um, it's a very high confident rate. Uh, and in order, in the layer two and layer three, it was a bit more like difficult to identify with the resolution, the same case that the layer three and four, but the layer five and six looks uh, with, with a high confidence score, but the best one described here is the, is the white matter. So once they have to find this special registration methodology and and perform a single Lucerne sequence in experiments and special transcriptomics, the next thing they wanted to do was to assess what's the in fact, the cost on increasing cluster resolution, this K parameter in unsupervised clustering has on the result of a special registration and in, in the identification of novel domains and sublayers. So first they, they try with K equal two. In that case, they correctly predicted gray and white matter spots, which was useful to confirm, but that was not a that was not very useful for the purposes of studying the anatomical architecture of the human DLPFC, because you want to see this laminar structure. Then they try with K equal nine, what they call the broad resolution. And with that, they almost recapitulated the six classical histological layers from one to six plus the white matter that is depicted here. Um, it's just uh, taking these two tissue sections or samples of a total 30 um as an example for visualization and then here is the the result of a spatial registration on the heat map and we have the nine defined domains most of them they are each associated to just one layer but there were some cases in which the layers were associated with more or were assigned more than one of these special domains 
that was even more evident with a fine resolution with kt equal to 16 in which spatial domains were also laminar and but, but the presence of these sublayers were, was more clear so for instance we have on the right that the spatial domain 2 and 14 and domain 1 they were all associated with the layer 1 in pink and the question there would be if those spatial domains represent different molecularly defined sublayers, or if they are more similar, it should be aggregated in just one layer. So they perform the corresponding analysis and verify if these two um, spatial domains have very specific features that make them different, but related, given that they are associated with the same layer. That was capturing this principal component tree that I'm showing, that I'm presenting below. So in that way, they define these well-defined um, sublayers. And then they also try with a super fine resolution with a k equal 28. In this case, the domains lacked, they missed this laminar structure and the spots map back to the broad um, fine spatial domains. So the conclusion here is that we don't want very few clusters, right? Because we want to study the laminar architecture of the human LPFC, but also we don't want the, many of these with this super fine resolution because we lose this architecture and actually the result seems a little seem to be a little bit more noisy because there are many of these domains, most of them not very well defined in just a specific way, right? And they also perform differential gene expression analysis for these special domains and defined with a fine and broad resolution given that they consider they were they had more of the laminar feeders and revealed that these were biologically meaningful given that these genes that are rich in spatial domains are also rich in even histological layers. Uh, for this image, uh, here is presented the spatial realization of fine resolution single nucleus RNA clusters um, and how these define laminar types. So uh, here is presenting um, the the 29 cell type anoterian clusters found in other K equal to 16, meaning that it contains around uh, 56 K nuclei. And here in the panel B, what we can look at is uh, a heat map, a complete heat map that uh, is integrating uh, different resolutions. The first one that we can look at here, that is from fine matter to layer one, is the good resolution. And then we have here the resolution. Uh, of, of K equal to nine that includes from, that is labeled with the P09 that is run into here. And also here in the in the top, we are looking at the at the layers found uh, of, the, of the different domains found with a K equal to 16. I'm gonna briefly explain each one of the, of the, the solutions that are containing in these ones. So uh, here, um, this, this correlation when you, if we're looking at the specific samples in order to, to understand some of the, of the findings, uh, I, I uh, make uh, some squares in order to look at specific cases. So here, for example, in the orange squares, what we are looking at is that, for example, the single nuclei cl uh, clusters that include the excitatory neurons uh, 0, 6 and 0, A and 0, 6 um, are especially registered with the layer 6. Uh, in all the different resolutions. So we can look at here, uh, marking with the X, that these are confident uh, scores finding uh, the different uh, case. So this is for the broad resolution, this is for the fine resolution and for the fine resolution. So we can find that all these uh, special register uh, clusters were assigned to the same layer, the layer six. And in the case, for example, in, this, in the square in blue, uh, we are looking at the layer two, at the assignation to the layer two for this uh, inhibitory cabaric cluster. And we can look at that in all the cases, this was uniquely assigned to the layer uh, two. So we can look at here to the broad resolution, to the fine and to the final resolution. And in the third case that we have here, uh, we can look at the endothelial cells to vascular special domain assignment to the layer one for the both solution but we can also look at, uh, for example, if we increase the resolution, uh, this is like a finding superpopulations that are included in the same layer. So 
depending of the on the objective or on the goals of the study, we can look at uh, subpopulations or just assigned to a different kind of resolution. And the panel C is uh, describing the, um, the cell proportions that are uh, uh, split uh, in the context of the hierarchical clusters found in the single nucleus uh, data uh, versus the, the layer resolution. So uh, here we have, uh, let's say, the, the broad. Um, the broad defined and defines uh, special registered domains uh, against the closed assignment with the single nucleus data. And finally, in the panel D, what we are looking at is uh, the means of the voltage load counts um, from the top 10 key markers identified uh, for each cell type at the layer resolution. So if we look at here, for example, to the layer, let's say the layer. Uh, Mm, the oligos, for example, the oligo, the oligo layer, we can look at that these are assigned to a specific uh, domain, and we can look at the te top 10 uh, teams that were used and so the world you to present this kit. Mm. Um, okay. And the next thing was to perform is plot the convolution, given that with the BTM platform for spatial transcriptome, it's under, under originally with BTM HD was not at a single cell resolution level. That was the case with a pre-prime using technology used in this study. So they know that on average, given other studies in the human DLPFC, on average, each plot has around three cells. So we would like also to know to determine the cell type composition within each plot and also within uh, at the domain and layer levels. So to do that, they they use the BCM HP SPG technology, spatial proteogenomics. They label and quantify for broad cell types across the DLPFC, the word astrocytes, neurons, oligodendrocytes, and microglia. And they did not just perform spot the convolution, but also benchmark create the convolution algorithms to choose the best option. Those were spot light, tangram, and cell duplication. So with the BCM SPG, if that's the goal, uh, reference data set, gold standard reference data set. They had a, uh, some manual annotations. They, for this, they only took a core of the 30 tissue sections or samples, and they could manually annotate the layers, and also they had the cell type counts per layer, just taking the average of the counts within the spots that are contained in a given layer. So they compare this non-cell type composition versus the predicted one by each one of these spot the composition algorithms. And so for instance, we have in the second, in the middle panel, in the middle figure FC, the proportion, the, the predicted counts are for excitatory neurons in layer five. In, across all the layers of these tissue sections. So if we just focus on a given color, for instance, red for cell duplication, we have a proportion the predicted counts for this type of cells across the four in each one of the four tissue sections. And the same for a time gram and a spotlight. So because these are excitatory neurons are specific to the layers, five would expect to find them more uh, having more bigger contributions or with more counts in the layer five. And that was true for cell duplication and tangram, but not for spotlight that predicted these counts at very low levels across all the layers. And pretty much the same thing is summarized on the right back bar plot, but that was taking the average across all the four TG sections and also for all the cell types. So we can see, for instance, that a cell duplication predicts more of the counts as being part of or coming from the excitatory neurons compared to tangram that predicts more for inhibitory neurons and oligodendrocytes. And then with an X or Azure call, um, we mark the, for a given cell type, the layer in which data cell type had the bigger contribution or the bigger proportion of counts. And it's an X if that was not the expected match or a circle if it was. Um, so overall, the conclusion here is that cell dedication and a pangram perform better than spotlight. That was the first way to evaluate the algorithm performance, but they also took um, the cell type counts by observing through amyloflorescence images. 
and compare the, the spot the convolution results. So here on the D panel, we have a correlation between those predicted counts versus the standard error. And that was per the sample ID or tissue section and for, for a given cell type. So again, they confirmed the correlation were higher with a cell duplication and time run compared to the spotlight. So uh, can you go to the next one, please? So they decided to apply these two spot convolution algorithms to, to predict the counts of each cell type in the spatial domains at the broad resolution, the nine spatial domains. And this is this F panel is presenting the average of the predicted cell type counts across the total 30 samples per spatial domain. And then you have just an example for one of these tissue sections and this, for, within each plot, we have like this, um, a very small pie chart with the contributions in, in the concept for cell type. So overall, we can see that with cell duplication, many of the counts are predicted to be from excitatory neurons because it's more bluish and compared to tangram. Okay, uh, Bernard, uh, for this image uh, is uh, is presenting the interactive analysis of the single nucleate RNC data and the lithium data uh, to identify uh, cell cell interactions uh, specific specifically for ligand receptor associated with schizophrenia. So uh, here is the uh, schematic analysis that was used to look at the cell cell communication identified. Uh, identify interacting cell types. So what you see uh, a specific database that contains information about the ligand receptors. Uh, what's identified a total of a 800 L4 ligand receptor uh, interactions associated with schizophrenia. And from this, uh, from this set, uh, it was prioritized a total of 18 inter and intracellular interactions, including nine interactions that involve this protein tyrosine uh, kinase. So we can look at here uh, how this uh, ligand, uh, it has a particular relation with these two, uh, with the receptor and with this protein tyrosine kinase that is important in the terms of this psychiatric disease. So uh, when the information was correlated, one uh, only consensus, consensus ligand receptor was fine between the, between the special domains of, between the information that was analyzed, uh, analyzed versus with the with the information that is uh, known in the databases, in the public databases that contains this information. And here in the, in the, in the last panel is just uh, looking at a way to, to characterize how this uh, cell communication is happening. So it's presenting a scheme that is looking at the ligand in the communication with the receptor and how it could probably have a, a role uh, with, the, with this uh, protein kinase with this protein, tyrosine kinase, that probably is activating uh, the MAP kinase as cascades. And in the panel B, what we are looking at is, uh, uh, is the prediction of the sender receiver crosstalk pattern of the ligand receptor between the different cell type layers. So if we look at here, we can look at the, the most uh, enriched, uh, the most uh, high exports predicted are lying in the secretory layer five and six. Uh, in, in this case, for the relation with the ligand, it's particular associated with the layer five, while the while the receptor is most enriched, in, is most predicted or more highly predicted in the layer six. And also, they uh, um, the authors uh, look at the at the percentage of presence of this uh, cell cell interaction. And in the panel C, I'll be presenting, um, let's say, the the uh, uh, that plot where we can not only look at the presence of this, uh, this particular uh, ligand receptor in the, in the protein kinase presence, but we are not looking that they are highly represented versus other layers, but we are also looking that they are co-expressed. So, and the panel D is a confirmation that is, uh, that is uh, um, showing how they, these uh, particular um, uh, different uh, combinations of the ligand with the receptors uh, are highly co-expressed in these particular layers, the layer 5, the layer 5C, and the layer 6. Um, in the second part of this figure, 
is an um, extended analysis in order to make the same representation but across the daily tissue sections. So if we look at the different uh, panels that we have here in the in the panel E, we have three three plots um, that are representing the the ligand, the relation with the ligand and the receptor, only the ligand and only the receptor. So if we look at carefully, we can look at the the in the special domain, uh, in this in this particular special domains in the layer five and layer six, these are highly uh, expressed uh, regarding the other the other special domains that are contained in in this in this study. Uh, in the case of the in the panel F, we are looking at the co-localization of this ligand receptor interaction. So if we look at carefully, we can we are looking at the at the in in gray. Uh, at the special domain nine in the layer six, but uh, we are looking here three different uh, associate three different um, information. Uh, one is the present only of the ligand and the receptor. For we in red, we are looking at the present of the cell interaction with the ligand and the receptor. So we can look at here uh, that these are more highlighted in a particular layer six. Um, if we look at now uh, to this um, to this. Uh, these few spot flows are co-expressing uh, the, um, also the relation of the cell cell interaction, the ligand and the receptor in the layer 5-6 and in the excitatory layer 6 only. And if we look at this, uh, the predicted proportion of the presence of this, uh, of this cell interaction is highly predicted in this particular uh, layers uh, regarding the others one uh, that is represented here. So if we look at here, uh, even the presence of the interaction is higher than if we just look at the presence of the ligand of the of the receptor uh, separately. And in the panel E, what we are looking at is the network analysis that include the tertiary tissue sections uh, using the top three uh, dom dominant uh, predicted cell types in each spot. The is confirming the presence of the of this um, ligand receptor interaction co-expressed. Uh, and it's uh, showing that this uh, occurs frequently, uh, or is frequently associated with these specific lawyers, the lawyer 5, 6, and the excitatory uh, lawyer 6. And it's also uh, the presence of, um, let's say, a, a, a co expressed uh, interaction with the oligodendrocytes. And that is why, <coughs> sorry, in the panel B, in the panel G, we are looking the a schematic representation of this association. So if we look at here carefully, we are looking the here is the representation of the of the ligand that is present in the layer five six with a with it with the interaction with the with the receptor and probably uh, he will have um, a role with the oligodendrocytes that uh, looks like that they coexist in the in the same uh, in the same cell cell communication. Okay, and the last part of the study was to evaluate the special arrangement of different cell types and identify the different um, studies and also to detect the gene as if there are any genes associated with neurodevelopmental and neuropsychiatric neuro 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 disorders that are enriched in certain domains. Just to gain this special information and have a special context. So what we're looking in this very big plot is um, on the x-axis, the cell populations, the cell types that were identified in different site and code studies with single mucus RNA seq data sets, just taking the human DLPFC samples from control centers because they also have um, samples from people with disorders, diseases, that's what they wanted to study, but in this case, we're just taking the control ones. And our samples were also from our typical controls. So, so and then in the y-axis we have the manually annotated histological layers at the bottom, and in and also the spatial domains are defined in broader resolutions uh, obtained within supervised space-based clustering. So again, they perform a spatial registration for the cell type in the x-axis to identify or to register to which layer is a map or a special domains. 
So we can think of each dot as these annotation, the corresponding cell type annotation to a given layer or domain, given by this highest correlation between the distance for enrichment or differential expression of the genes in a given cell type versus all the other ones in the x-axis versus or, or the correlation of that with the enrichment of the genes in a given layer or a special domain versus all the other layers or a special domains respectively. Um, so what they found was, um, sorry, can I, I'm gonna ask for your remote control. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so what they found for the excitatory neuron subtype populations is that they do have this liminar expected annotation given that they register to relevant histological layers and also with the corresponding spatial domains here, right? So they were very consistent. And then for inhibitory neurons, most of the population registered to multiple histological layers and spatial domain domains, which was also expected. And finally, for other non-neuronal cell types, um, they also had expected biologically supported uh, registrations. Um, they also took a cell type populations identified in controlled samples from a study performing autism spectrum disorder, but again, just, um, just taking the control samples. So what we have here is the heat method special registration. And again, what they found is that cell populations had expected annotations to the relevant domains. And but they also identified novel laminar assignments that were not expected or perhaps expected but never previously identified for some of these populations, demonstrating once more the usefulness of this strategy. And finally, they perform enrichment analysis for differentially expressed genes associated with diseases. So in the figure C, what we have is the differentially expressed genes here on the x-axis for autism spectrum disorder versus the controls that are cell type specific um, obtained from another study. And they tested for the assay enrichment of these differentially expressed genes among the genes that were enriched in the different spatial domains that ident identify at the broad resolution, and the nine spatial domains. And they obtained some, some hits, significant hits. The same thing when looking at differentially expressed genes for major depressive disorder and post-stress, post-traumatic post stress disorder in the DLPFC and the, the medial prefrontal cortex. And they were, for instance, here they know that they were associated with the spatial domain one and two, both of them mapping to the first layer, the histological layer. So um, these are the remarking points and uh, part of the discussion. As we saw, we they, they implemented these unsupervised clustering and telephone communication tools, the expanded donor pool. So they were able to identify within this way higher resolution in novel spatial domains, like this cortical sublayer, not laminar necessarily. And also these unsupervised approaches are essential for the spatial profiling of brain regions that perhaps lack these molecular histological boundaries that are well-defined, such as in the human DLPFC. Also, the missing single resolution of this team was overcome by these spatial convolution tools so that we can get more insights into the cell type composition of the spots and, and domains. And then this spatial registration developed offered um, a rapid in an easy way to especially annotate a single nucleus RNA seq clusters, cell type populations, and also the unsupervised spatial domains to have this spatial context. Also, these are arrangement analysis that I just showed you reveal some genes that are associated with certain diseases in specific cell types and that are also enriched in a given spatial domain or histological layer. And finally, they developed this large scale transcriptome wide, especially resolved molecular echoes of the human DLPFC, also integrating single nucleus RNA seq data. And they publicly share this uh, as a probable source to study brain diseases development and also to continue studying the neuroanatomy of the human DLPFC. Um, so that's all for this article. We have 
any questions?